Capturing the essence of a lightning strike has been an ambition of mine for as long as I can remember. I mean, lightning is just incredibly beautiful, yet painfully temporary, leaving virtually no evidence of its chaotic path down from the heavens. However, every time lightning strikes the ground, it does leave a signature. With lightning running at 40,000 degrees Fahrenheit, if that strike hits sand, it forms a fulgurite. Made of fused sand, these glass tubes extend underground, following the path that lightning took to distribute its energy. Sometimes straight, sometimes branching. It's wild. Luckily, nature doesn't have a patent on high voltage, meaning these fulgurites can be reproduced in the name of science and art. So a few weeks ago, I set out to do just that. Combining high voltage, sand, and way too much resin. This is my diorama of a lightning strike. Both this video and my scruffy face are sponsored by Henson Shaving. Using high voltage to make a homemade fulgurite is really fun, but it's nothing new. It's been done many times before. Typically, it's as simple as pulling a high voltage arc under the sand and giving it some time to heat up, maybe add a branch or two, but this results in fairly straight glass tubes that lack structure or detail and are stupidly fragile. In order for a diorama to glorify a lightning strike, I couldn't have any of this. To encourage stronger, more naturally formed branches, here's my plan. I'll take a ceramic pot and place a high voltage electrode at the bottom. Then fill the pot with dry sand preheated to about 600 degrees. I can insert another electrode into the top of the sand and manually initiate a high voltage arc under the sand. This would form a superheated channel of glass which is super conductive. Then by touching the top electrode to various locations on the sand, electricity would form conducting pathways whose shape is partially dictated by nature. Afterwards I'd place the uh, resulting fulgurite in a container of some type and then submerge it in resin. That's the plan. Now, kicking off this diorama, I need to start with the keystone, uh, the hardest part of the entire build, which is the fulgurite itself. Now, to make a fulgurite, you need the right material and sand, and then also the right type of high voltage, and probably some trial and error along the way, too. Running to a hardware store, I grabbed a bag of play sand, then brought out a really special high voltage transformer, which would be perfect for this job. This is not an MOT, and I don't recommend using them. It does, however, produce about 9,000 volts AC at a delicious amount of current. You'll notice the entire video I'm using an insulated handle, which makes drawing arcs more safe. Placing one electrode under the center of the pot and filling it with preheated sand, it was time for work. Sweet, let's see if normal play sand and 9,000 volts is enough to make the fractal tree I'm looking for. Oh, we've got contact. <laughs> this might just work. Oh, this is looking good. It's been about five minutes. I let it cool a bit because that was several minutes of plasma temperatures. Now to remove it from the sand without breaking it. So I planned on how to create the fulgurite, but uh, not how to remove it. So this part was complete guesswork. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Now that's pretty cool. I think uh, we've got a fractal tree of glass <laughs> from high voltage going through sand. That's awesome. I mean, if it was lightning, it'd be upside down like this because the bolt's coming from the sky down into the sand, but close enough for now. Super cool. Also super fragile, like several arms have already broken off. So I want to fix that. After some reading on how glass is formed, turns out uniform grain size is critical to proper and equal melting. And you'll notice here this play sand was more diverse than a Netflix show. So I drove to a local landscaping supply and after some digging around found some fine grain black sand. Filling the pot with preheated black sand, the results were promising. Yeah, that black sand is way more conductive. Again, removing it was a huge challenge. While some arms broke off this time, the structure held together much better. Attempt number two, and it looks incredible in black. <laughs> Look at that, that's amazing. Um, it's a little bit stronger than the first time around, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's still not perfect because one branch broke off when I took it out of the pot, but definitely an improvement. Comparing this black sand attempt to the play sand, you can tell a slight improvement in structure and quality. Next, I tried a couple additions to the sand, hoping it would help with strength or structure, and I really thought I was a genius. 
First, I tried adding tin with the idea that it would melt easily and bond with the sand grains. This definitely led to a strange result with thicker channels that were even more fragile. It looked hideous. Then I tried adding alumina powder, which is a common glass additive for increased strength. This led to a very clean melt with the strongest glass yet. There, there was actually more to this fulgurite until I dropped it. With each attempt, I learned more and more and more about the challenge that is glass production. And I'm telling you, it's a huge challenge. Uh, before I move on to a final approach though, let's talk about a challenge that we can all pretty much relate to. Whew, personal grooming. While 9,000 volts would definitely take care of my facial hair, it would also take care of my face. Thankfully, Henson's razors sent me the kind of sharp, clean-cutting tech that doesn't require 9,000 volts and a containment field. You see, I'm really prone to razor burn and ingrown hairs, which is why I virtually never shave clean. And I'm not alone in those regards. Recent surveys indicate that over two-thirds of men expect, expect pain and discomfort after shaving. That's kind of sad when you think about it. Along comes Henson's. With their precision-engineered blades, aluminum frame, and zero plastic waste, plus the fact that they are an industry-leading brand actively involved with hygiene research, I feel way more inclined to shave these days. They're actually partnered with a medical imaging startup which allows them to quantify the impact of shaving. Oh, that's super smooth. And the whole no plastic waste thing is huge considering the U.S. throws away over 2 billion plastic razors every year, which is terrible. This isn't terrible, though. Their blades are built with a 30 degree angle for the optimal cutting surface, and the blade only extends 0 .0013 inches past the shave plane, which is less than the thickness of a human hair, so no chance of breaking the skin. They use standard double-edged blades that cost less than 10 cents, making them super affordable. Hmm, that's actually pretty good. 70s J has arrived. Use code PLASMA or click the link in the description down below to get 100 blades for free with the purchase of a razor. Just make sure both products are in your cart for the code to take effect. Okay, on to the fulgurite. After further reading into creating glass, sand grain size is just as important as grain uniformity, meaning finer grain sand will melt into stronger glass. So I went back to the landscaping supply and bought the finest sand I've ever seen. It's basically powder. Look at that. It's basically dust. <laughs> After heating this dusty batch up, I gave it a stab. The end result whew, was gorgeous. Basically stronger, thicker branching, and with more complete fusion of the glass. Compared to all the previous attempts, this was in a class all of its own. Naturally, this meant scaling up in size, in preparation for the large diorama. Mixing up a batch of 95% fine sand and 5% alumina, things looked good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's just pure dust. Yeah. <laughs> this last attempt with the larger pot took a lot of prep time and a lot of work and I didn't want to risk breaking it while removing it from the sand because it was a larger tree so it's more likely to break and after racking my brain literally for hours it finally hit me oh a vacuum cleaner how original and it worked great Lifting it carefully out of the pot, oh, it was clear this thing was gorgeous. Oh, wow. That is perfect. Perfectly upsized from the smaller scale, and perhaps even more wild looking. Finally, the hardest part of this diorama was over, and now onto the fun part, which is building a container, designing an underground scene, and pouring resin. Okay, so this part was tricky. To get the right orientation, I had to attach wire tethers to various points, keeping it in place for the resin pour. Ultimately, I cast the fulgurite in three separate pours of resin because the volume used would lead to a lot of shrinkage. Next, I moved on to building the top. Ah, after four or five days of pouring and casting resin, maybe, maybe even five days, 
it was ready to be removed from the acrylic box. And, and this part was uh, kind of a disaster because I didn't end up using enough release mold spray on the inside of the box before pouring the resin. So I actually had to take a hammer and a chisel and a screwdriver and pry and chip away like a godless savage. But after some much needed sanding, I was left with this. A fulgurite branching downward into a cloudy underground matrix originating from an impact site on a sand dune. The clarity took a bit of experimentation and the outer surfaces aren't perfect, but it's good enough for me. The whole point of this diorama for me is to glorify a lightning strike, right? So it needed a trophy stand. Oh yeah, that black base seriously makes it pop. <laughs> and with that, the diorama is complete. I designed it to be anatomically accurate to what happens in real life. So you've got a lightning storm, right? And you have a strike hitting either a sandy surface or the sand dunes and it leaves an impact point right there. But there's more to it, right? Because once the energy contacts the surface, it reaches downward through the earth, searching for either the water table or the bedrock, which you can see here on the bottom. And in the process of reaching downward, it forms this glass fractal tree as it dissipates its energy. So what's cool about a fulgurite is it represents the dissipation of energy underground from a lightning strike. And doing it in a diorama form gives you a really, really unique perspective of a fulgurite in situ after a lightning strike. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's the prime desk piece for inspiration, and I learned a tremendous amount in the process, including using crushed glass to create fulgurites of even higher quality. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see that, a build of a larger one using crushed glass. I've never made a diorama before, so this whole thing was an adventure for me. Thanks for joining me along for the journey. Uh, I do have to say, if you're not familiar with high voltage, you're not experienced with it, I don't recommend you try duplicating this yourself. But I do look forward to all of your comments down below. You keep it classy.